Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a blessed day. I just want to come to bring you another message today. While it's very important to really um, understand the difference of the covenants, you know, because sadly there are people who are placing the church under, you know, this new covenant and literally butchering scriptures. And it's sad because there's a bondage that comes with that, whether you realize it or not. When you place the church under a new covenant specifically made for Israel, what happens is you begin to doubt your salvation because now you can say, well, how do I, how is it that I still have these thoughts? How is it that I still do stuff or say something that I shouldn't say or react a certain way? I mean, just something, you know, that goes contrary to the perfectness of God, you know, then you have a problem right away because now you start questioning, does that mean I'm not saved? Am I saved? But before we dive into that, because we're going to have to, you know, anytime <laughs> I'm making a video because I actually watched, you know, someone's, you know, channel that does prophecy stuff. And I was like, oh, Lord, here we go again. I just feel like I need to address this so we can kind of just be, be very um, straightforward with each other and just stick with scripture, guys, you know. In the proper context, by the way. But before I get into that, let's get into the gospel first. Because that's the most important thing I can speak here is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. And that's that Jesus Christ died for our sins. According to scriptures, was buried. And on the third day rose from the dead. According to scriptures, for our justification. Okay? So Jesus always existed. He is the second person of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus left heaven, was born of a virgin, lived the perfect life, never sinned, shared his precious blood on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all our sins, past, present, and future. What God commands is that we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that means we got to believe the testimony of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, resurrection, and trust in his finished redemptive work on the cross. You know, when Jesus shouted, it is finished, the job is done. He accomplished what he came to do for us. And that means he came and purchased us with his own blood so that we don't have to pay for our sins anymore. Why? Because he has paid it all for us. But in order for you to receive that payment, you must believe by faith. Ephesians 2 9 tells us, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. So you can boast when you're receiving a free gift. That is what salvation is, a free gift. And how do you receive it? By believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and trusting in his finished redemptive work on the cross. Okay? Simple as that. If you believe the gospel, then you are saved, sealed, and sanctified. Read Ephesians 1 for the promise. Okay? The moment you believe, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, who is our guarantee of inheritance okay until the redemption of the purchased possession which is jesus christ comes to redeem us as in claim what he already purchased okay so with that being said once you believe you are saved sealed sanctified and you were justified by god by your faith just like abraham believed god and he was justified by god okay you could find that in romans chapter 4 all right. Now, on the topic of this covenant issue that I have right here is that I was watching the video. You know, if you guys follow, he's very big on YouTube, obviously, over I think over 200 and something thousand followers, you know. But he does like prophecy, you know, like uh, every day, I, I think he does um, like new stuff about everything that's going on in the world and how this ties into the Bible, what not the case. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. But my problem is at the end, when you start talking about salvation, of course, you're going to bring up ABC, you know, admit your sinner in need of a savior and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, you know, in the gospel of Jesus. Christ. And then he says to call on the name of Jesus again, calling the name of Jesus Christ now will save you is believing. Simple as that, you know, <laughs> it, it, I mean, it makes no, I mean, it's like, where's the logic, guys? You know, you just got to think for a second. So you have believed on him and then call on the name of the Lord. Wait, I thought you already believed. So who are you calling? You know, you see, 
because they took that in, from Romans chapter, chapter 10, running with the witches, reading for Israel, by the way, okay? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of like, like out of my wits end, just trying to keep explaining the same thing because I know some people, they get it and some people just don't, which is frustrating because I'm like, guys, do you know how much more liberty you have in Christ if you're not placing burdens on yourself and know that he already took our burdens away, okay? Like salvation is so simple that a child, when you give them the gospel, the child like, this is why Jesus said, unless you come to me like little children. I mean, come on, guys. Think about little children for a second. You will know why it's entering. So what is little They are just completely clueless. They are dependent on what you tell them. That's it. You know, something so simple is not complicated, but man has complicated the gospel to make it so difficult for people to just simply enter. And that's not what I'm here to do. What I'm here to do is to debunk that, okay? So back to my topic of this covenant. So I was listening, and then the guy has to quote Ezekiel 36, which we're going to go there. But I just want to point something out to you guys. It is Ezekiel 36 has to do with the new covenant, which is exactly here where God said, I will give them a new heart, okay, and a new spirit. But he's using that in context of Christians. Say that once you get saved, God will give you a new heart and a new spirit. And because he gives you a new heart and a new spirit, it will cause you to walk in, 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 in obedience to, to the Lord and all this. And I said, wait a minute. You don't even understand what you're speaking. It's like you're modeling the gospel with the promises to Israel, which is totally different because this promise will be fulfilled at the end of the tribulation. Okay? But, you know, during the millennial reign, those people that God has given this, they're going to do exactly that. They will walk in perfect obedience to the Lord at that time. Okay? Because, but, but it's God that's doing that. And I'm going to show you why God is saying he's the one doing it. Again, it's not them. It's him that's doing it. And that is in Ezekiel 36. You see, what they do is they take this, they selectively choose literal verses, but they don't read the whole thing. Because if you read from the beginning of that portion, it tells you exactly who God was addressing. And that's why I'm like, why would you even try to apply that to the church? And you see exactly who God is talking to. But let's understand this new covenant from Jeremiah 31, which is also found in Hebrews chapter 8. Okay. But we're going to go to all three of them just so you can see what I'm talking about. Because we got to put this to rest, guys. It just bothers me that many people watch and follow this and just, oh, my gosh, I just don't get it, man. I pray that the Lord will open eyes of many people who need to hear this. Seriously. This burden needs to stop. I mean, people are just dealing with so much already, you know. Last thing you need is to add additional burden on them. You know, the gospel is not a burden. Christ is not a burden. He's not burdensome. As a matter of fact, he spoke the opposite. His burden is light. His yoke is easy. You know? But this is not it. Because you place people under a heavy burden where they begin to question the salvation. And we find out that you will know that you're saved based on your testimony. You know, that you believe the gospel. It's, it's just that simple. But anyway. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not, again, it, it didn't say the church, did it? It didn't say the Christian, the born again, the house of born again believers or the house of, you know, the Christians, you know, from this city or that city. No, it was very clear. House of Judah, house of Israel, okay? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Okay? That was a different covenant. He said, this is a different one, which my covenant, they break, which they did. Because remember, if you remember Moses, when he writing out those laws, and when they re recited it, what did they say? Everything, they, they always re repeat it. Everything, he's, you, know, the Lord, you know, the Lord said, you know, that we should do, we will do. Whatever the, the word of the Lord said, we will do. Okay, they always say the same thing, but they go left field, the opposite. <laughs> they do the opposite. I mean, that's a given. They keep breaking, they make the promises, and then they break the promises. This has been the cycle, okay? And God is, you know, 
you know, speaking that anyway, he said, which covenant they break, although I was in husband unto them, said the Lord, but they shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord, what days after those, the tribulation, okay, you see why, said the Lord, I will put my law in the inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. God is going to save them to the uttermost. Okay? Now, with that, let's go to... Hebrews chapter 8, and then we're going to go to Ezekiel after that. I can't believe this, y'all. Hebrews chapter 8, and I believe it starts in verse 8 also. Hebrews. <laughs> okay, check this out. <sighs> oh, verse 7. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place had been sought for the second. Remember, we just read Jeremiah 31, starting from verse 31, right? Look at this. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Again, being repeated, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Didn't we just read that in Jeremiah 31? Okay. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he said, a new covenant. He had made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxed old is ready to vanish away. Look at this. See, this is God repeating himself here again in Hebrews chapter 8. Because people like to quote that and place it on the Christians and say, see, you gave a new mind and her. This is all Israel. Okay. Now let's go to the verse that the guy has quoted. Lord have mercy. The same thing. Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel. 36. Mm -mm. Context is key, people. Context is key. Okay. All right. Let's scroll down right here. 22. Look what the Lord said. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel. Again, God is very specific. He didn't say, say unto the house of the church. House of the born again believers. The house of Israel. Very specific. Okay. Israel. God still have a program for Israel. He has not stopped with Israel. Okay. He will fulfill the covenant promises he's made to Israel, which is not fulfilled yet. And that is to come in the future. Okay. Look what it says. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord. Saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. Okay? Has Israel been sanctified right now? Uh, no, they have not. Because most of Israel don't even believe in God. So that automatically disqualifies this. It hasn't happened yet. Okay? Now look at what, what it said. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Now, people will think this is, you know, the whole thing with 1948. This is not it. This is separate. This is what will happen during that 
end of the tribulation when he said, I will gather them from all four corners of the earth. He's talking about the children of Israel. That's part of prophecy, you know, concerning, you know, at the end of the tribulation. How God is going to bring them from all four corners of the earth back into Israel, okay? He's going to send his angels to do that, okay? Um, you, you read that in the book of Revelation. I believe he's in Matthew as well. Um, anyway, look what it says. <laughs> For I will take you from among the hidden and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit. See that? This is the house of Israel. Will I put within you, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. To say that this is the church is got to be the most craziest thing I've heard. Because, <laughs> first of all, no born again believer has a new heart. We all have a new spirit but not a new heart. Because if you have a new heart, this promise then will also fall to you, which means if you're not doing exactly that, but how do you measure that? That's another thing. If you're not doing exactly what's written here, then you're in trouble. Now you have to question yourself then. If you have a new spirit, but not a new heart, then, oh my goodness, then I'm in trouble then. Because for you to say that you have a new heart, that is false. No Christian have a new heart. Okay, we have a new spirit, but not a new heart. This is why we say to renew your mind. If you have a new heart, why would Paul say to renew your mind? Why would he say to put on Christ? Why would he be telling you what is the whole purpose of, you know, to encourage brethren to live after their profession of faith? Why would Paul be writing all this encouragement and admonishments, you know, to the church if they all received a new heart, you know what I'm saying, with the new spirit? I mean, think about it for a second. Sometimes you have to use logic to actually make sense and realize this ain't talking about you, okay? This is separate for Israel, okay? And that is the remnant that will be left after the tribulation, okay? You can read in Zechariah, I believe in between chapter 11 through 14, where two-thirds of Israel is going to be wiped, killed during the tribulation, okay? Only one-third remnant is going to be left, Okay, this is all prophesied and it's going to come to pass. That one third that's left, they are the ones that this promise is, is going to be for. Okay, but anyway. <sighs> so, you see what I'm talking about here, guys? I mean, oh my goodness, man. I can't. It's just, the Bible is so clear. And yet, people don't want to read it in context. They get to cherry pick scriptures because they want to use it to support whatever theory that they don't come up with. Yeah, that's not how you read the Bible, though, you know? I mean, you could say all these wonderful things and make it rhyme all you want to, but it's still wrong because placing a different dispensation into the wrong dispensation is a problem, okay? Because then you place a burden on yourself that's not supposed to be because now you have to question, am I really saved if I just had these bad thoughts? So does that mean I'm not saved now? You know, I mean, whatever, you know? Okay, I reacted. Well, I wasn't being, you know, Christian like today. You know, does that mean I'm not saying? I mean, do you see the problem? You can go on and on. We could give many excuses and examples, and you find out how this is so wrong. Please leave the Bible alone and stick with what God has said. Simple as that. Stop twisting words to making it sound the way you want it to convince other people that. Hey, this is really it. Let's not do that. The Bible answers its own questions, okay? Leave the writers of the Bible alone. The way it is written is exactly that. You cannot change the way the Bible is written to make it fit your narrative and expect everyone to just go along with it. No. We need to stick with the understanding of scriptures, okay? If you don't understand, then ask the Holy Spirit to show you. That's all I'm saying. Because I was a little bit like, like taken back, like, here we go again. Like, you get all these people looking at your channel. I mean, how wonderful it is for those who preach the gospel of peace, the gospel of grace, 
the, the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus, that gospel, that many people can just come to Christ and believe without having this burden of questioning their salvation nonstop because of other backloaded message that's attached to that. Guys, the moment you have believed the gospel, you were saved, sealed, and sanctified forever. God will not repent, okay, for the gift that he's given us. The Bible makes it clear. The gifts of God is without repentance. And we know that Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells you that this salvation is a free gift from God. So God is not going to change his mind, okay, from that. And eternal life means eternal. The moment you receive it, it cannot no longer be eternal if it is an eternal. I mean, I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Either you receive eternal life or you don't. There's no temporary life. Jesus died to pay for the sins of the whole world once and for all. He, Jesus is not going to keep coming back to die for sins every single time. And the world repent. Please stop. The Bible doesn't teach repent of sin to be saved. Repent, change of mind, metanoia, okay? Metanoia, which is a great word, change of mind from your unbelief to believe in the gospel. Because God knows we can make promises. I've showed you guys a, a few places. We, we make promises all day together, and we're always going to break those promises. This is why we can't make no promises to God at all. Because we are not perfect in the flesh. While we are perfected in our spirit, but we're not perfected in this flesh. This is why we still have issues. We, we still get sick, okay? We got problems in this flesh, man. This is not the flesh that's going to be in heaven. We get a new one. Remember that. Anyway, I'm done with my rambling. I love you guys, and just be blessed, guys. And always remember, any questions or what seems uncertain, the Bible answers the question itself. That's how God designed the Bible to give you the answers that you seek from it, you know? Just ask the Holy Spirit, you know, please help me. Show me, and he will, okay? Anyway, guys, you guys be blessed, okay? And be safe out there. Peace.